Hi everybody, this is Lori. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an accordion journal. And I've also made a graduation gift and a Father's Day gift. And this is just a little travel journal. I'm gonna show you how to make these. These are really cute. Actually, the one I'm gonna show you how to make is this one here in the center. So I'm um, just gonna show you real quickly what they look like. Well, actually, I'll show you this one last. <laughs> Let me show you this one first. Those are just tied up with some sari silk. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through here. See how it's an accordion. It just keeps going on and on. <laughs> this, one's, this one's made by 12 by 12 paper. So this one's the larger one. Then you flip it over and I've got some um, pockets. A top here. Um. A signature here is some writing paper. It's a blank spot. I haven't decided what I want to do with this yet, but I figured I'll work on that as I gather things from our, my travels this summer. And this one I thought would be a really cute Father's Day idea. Or even, you know, a father's birthday or, well, it doesn't have to be a father. Husband, brother, whatever. A masculine gift. So this is made with Tim Holtz papers. I thought these little boys were cute. I stuck them in like that. Here's the back. Oh, or the flip side. I don't know what you want to call it. And this is the one that we're going to make today. All right, stick around and I'll show you how to make this. to make another one. So I did a medium sized one. This, like I said, 12 by 12 paper. And this, oops. And this was six by six Tim Holtz paper. Um, see the stripes there? And like I said, it was the industrial one. So that was six by six. Yeah, okay. So first, when you, when you use double-sided paper, um, you're going to have to decide, the first thing you need to decide is what papers do you want to be facing on the inside of your book, booklet, like the inside like this. I mean, inside, I'm talking about like this part here. Oops, I did it in. Inside, I'm talking about this part here. And, and this is the outside of your paper. Or I'm going to flip it over and see the stripes. That's the, I would call it the outside. At least my terminology to explain this. So on this one, this is on the inside and this would be on the outside. Like if I um, do a signature or something, that would be the signature side or you know, pockets or whatever. Okay, so how I keep in mind is whatever I want on the inside, I want to be the mountain. So the mountain fold and then you have a valley fold. So mountain is gonna be the inside, inside of this book. So, what do I want on the inside? And I think for this particular one, this particular piece of paper, I'm going to want this on the inside because of that. I don't really want... They just have to be the same print, <laughs> but different color. So, I think I want this one on the inside. So, this is going to be mountain, okay? So, I'm going to flip this over like this. And then we line this up as best you can. And what I do is I come over here where this tip is. I try to get that point. It kind of matters. Not a whole, whole lot. But it, it'll make your life easier if you can get that as, this fold as accurate as you can. Now come over here and get this fold here. There we go. So I just kind of crease it down like that, just kind of gently for a moment. And then I'll take a bone folder that I have sitting here that I want to crease it nice and taut with my bone folder. And now what you're going to need to do is find the center mark on this because what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over to the center and 
when this will be folded out anyway. So all these four points are going to be folded towards the center like this. You'll see here in just a moment. And then now Natasha, she shows you a couple different ways to find the center. I happen to find a little different way that works easier for me. Um, for this, you'll need a clear ruler. Um, so for this, like I said, you'll need a clear ruler and a pencil. Why on earth did my pencil go? Just had it. Oh, here we go. So this is, this is how I do it. So, um, like I said, I'm going to try to stay in frame here. So here's our tip in here, down here. So what I do is I take my ruler and I look at one of these lines and I make that, so it, this is flat right against that line. And I pull this in. I line the ruler up here with a tip. See, I got it lined up with the tip. Put my pencil there, right on the tip so I can feel it. And then um, there's the line, and then I draw a little line right there with the pencil. So I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me bring that up. So there's the center. So then I open this up. Remember, see, this is going to be on the inside. Is it might be making some sense to you now. A little bit more light. Okay. So then I'm going to take and fold this up right into that, right when the crease line, right on that fold line, top of that peak of that mountain. I'm going to put that tip right there in that line and bring this down. And then we're just going to crease this again. Take my bone folder. And I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Bring the, rip, the tip right up to that line. You can see it. The pencil line is here, and then the crease line is right across there. I'm not sure if you can see that in, in the camera, but you know, try. Like I said, th this is actually a really simple project, and the project it comes finished. It, it looks so nice. It looks like, oh my gosh, that looks so complicated, and that's what um, drew me to um, to do this particular project. When Natasha was showing it, I go, oh my gosh, that, that's so cute. I've got to do that. <laughs> so... And here we go. We're just going to bring this one up. You can just open this up too. You don't have to necessarily have that. And then see, I can barely see my line. Bring that tip right up there. I'm going to fold this like this. And it's lined up pretty good. See, there's a little bit of overlap. I find that happens. Because it's really hard to get absolutely perfect. But just, just do your best. I mean, this is handmade. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I'm not mass producing these and... You know, for, I don't know, the, for some employer or something, I may be fussier. Let's see how that's got a gap right there. That might matter. To me, that's a little too much gap. I'm going to tighten that up a little. So it's going to throw that point over a little bit. But I'd rather do that than have that gap there. Because you'll see later why that would, might make a difference. Okay. And then, now that you've got all that folded, and you got, remember, your mountain's right here. So then I'm going to take this and fold that over. So this piece sits up like this piece. See how they sit up? And then you're going to join them together here. You line these up and join them here. And you see, this is where it might make a difference if that was overlapping, like I, if I'd have left it. See if I line that up, it overlaps a yeah, a little bit of difference, but it's not bad. It's, I mean, don't beat yourself up over it. Like I said, this is handmade, but it is a simple project. I think it is. And see how these fruits are upside down? <laughs> so if I want to be picky, I can be mindful and turn it this way. So yeah, just, you know, when you go to assemble them, just be mindful of certain things. And then when we flip this over, now these are going to be like pages like before. I just think this bird pages so cute so cute anyway so we have I have two more sheets to do um I'll do it one more time so you can see how to do it and then I'll do the other other one off camera um I won't expect you to sit here and watch every single one that I do so again whatever we want on the inside 
will be the mountain. So I like to sit it against this other ones that I've already folded just to see approximately, you know, what order I'll put the sheets in. I mean, I can always change my mind, of course. And when I'm looking at this, it looks like a flower pot. So this would be the up. This, you know, it, this paper just happens to be in a direct, some of it's directional, some of it's not. It's, again, it's not a, not a huge deal. Um, I'm just trying to see if I want this on the inside or if I would like this on the inside. I think I would like, oh my gosh, hardest decisions of the day. I think I would like this on the inside. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just overthinking it. So let me show you again. Let's fold this up here. Move these out of the way. Line that up, that peak, tip to tip, best you can. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, these papers, um, these are eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches because that paper um, pad is eight and a half by 11. So that's why these. So you just, basically you need a square piece of paper. That square could be any size you would like. It just needs to be square. And me hand cutting these might be why um, I have a, why it's off a little bit on the fold. Because I, I cut them each individually. Better. Okay. There we go. So I crease that. Bear with me. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I was in frame because nothing more annoying than making a project in a video and then going to um, edit it and you're off frame. No, that's so annoying. So I don't want to do that. All right, so here's my point again. And straight edge. So I'm putting on a number nine. And then line that up. See that? Really wasn't so straight as I thought. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to come down. Mark my center again. Like I said, Natasha, she has a couple different other ways of doing it. Um, any way you want to do it, just find the center, whatever you find easiest for you. I just happen to find that easier for me because I happen to have a clear ruler. If you don't have a clear ruler, then um, you can like, like fold this in half again, like this, as evenly as possible, and put a small crease in that spot. And then what you'd have, crease would be like an X. Um, you can measure it. Um, the, the, whatever half of this would be. This ruler is not even big enough. But whatever half that would be. Or if you have one of these types of rulers like... Uh, oh, my tear ruler. I have another one somewhere that, that shows better. But it has a zero in the center. You could line that up so, okay, this is... 12 at 12 whatever so you find the center that way whatever you, like I said whatever you find easiest or but I find that easier for me because I have a, a clear ruler and then I'm gonna bring this over again and then I bring that up the fold increase this flip around do the other one the center mark so you can see and I'll bring this up through here there it goes again I must not have cut this perfectly square. It's only thing I can figure out. Let me do that. Yeah, I must not cut that perfectly square. Pull this one up. Maybe I'll start just using this edge as the line to match it with. Okay, there we go. 
And again, you flip it around. You crease it this way. So everything's going the way you want it. Now you can have as many sheets or pages as you'd like. I mean, I could just make, I could stop here and just make this uh, just three, um, I don't want I don't want to say signatures, I don't know what to call them, but three pockets here for this accordion. Um, I obviously could stop here if I wanted, but I did cut out four pieces of paper and I don't want to waste any. So, and then I'm going to place this one next to it and I'm trying to decide what I want on the inside. That'd be pretty on the inside. And it's green. Oh yeah, and that green would go good with that on the outside. I think that's what I'll do. So this will be the inside. See, I almost goofed up. <laughs> I gotta keep mindful. Inside. I'll fold this again. I'll go ahead and show you it again. I'll well just do this one on camera too. If you want to speed through it? You can. Of course, you can. I'm trying to be mindful of this little point. And then and we're going to find the center again. Find it my way. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to line it up on the number nine. It doesn't really matter what number you line it up on. I'm just lining it up on nine. Pencil line there, bring this around. Bring it up, bring this around. I'm thinking this time I'm going to see if I have better luck doing it this other way. Picking it straight across that part. I think that's probably going to be better. It's like anything else. The more you make these, the more little tricks you learn. It's like anything else. Like The more journals I make, the more tricks I learn. Like every time I make one, that next journal is a little bit nicer and a little bit nicer. It's just like anything. Anything you learn to do, practice makes better. <laughs> I don't know if practice makes perfect necessarily, but you know, practice, you learn. You always learn. At least I do. I learn different ways of doing things. There we go. But, you know, it doesn't really super duper matter that, like, See how there's a gap right there? It doesn't really matter because this is going to be on the in, inside the book anyway. Uh, to me, it would be more important to have the edges line up like this than more than the points. So that way, when you're looking at your journal like this, it's flat here. But anyway, that's just me being picky. All right. So I decided to do four here. So... We'll get, bring one of these back in here. So this one I did five, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. I did five. So it gave this this for the dead center. So I put the signature there. Again, you can do it any way you want. And then this Father's Day one I did three. And I did just three. Three um, of them. And then I put that in the center. And this one I'm doing four. I'm still gonna put a signature in here, and I know it'll probably make it off balance a little, but I don't think that matters that much. We can do something different with one of those pockets. And before I did this, before I went on camera here, I decided to cut my paper for my signature to get going on that. So it will sit in here. And I have it, I don't know why I closed it like that, I just did. But I have it nice and smooth. I took the time to cut the paper. I didn't wanna do all that on camera. And then I took these little stamps, they're kind of bohemian looking, and I did different colors. 
that, that coordinate with this um, with this accordion book. And I didn't use tea stained because I, I thought this would be nicer to be in the vibrant colors. I love things that are um, vintage or antique looking. You know, they had the tea stain like the masculine one that I made. Right here again, if you want to see the masculine one, the, the teen stained paper. And I see how I inked around the edges. I, I love that look. But sometimes I just want something a little more crisp. And this one here is going to be for a graduation gift um, for my great niece. She's really more like a regular niece, not a great niece. Because her dad um, is, was, is actually two years older than me. Um, so... Uh, so she's more of a niece because he's more like a brother than a nephew. So, so she makes her first niece in, in my eyes, <laughs> not technically, but in my brain. Um, so anyway, I would make this for her graduation. Yeah, I just think that'd be cute. Of course, she's young, and I don't know if she's gonna be in sort of vintagey stuff. But anyway, so I'm gonna glue this. Show you how to glue these together now. Put this to the side. Okay. Um. I'm debating right now whether I want to sew around the edges, which I might do. And when I, while I'm making these, I was thinking about other little things to do to make these a little different. Like if you sewed along this edge, let's say, and you didn't sew along this edge, when you flip it over, it could be a little secret tuck spot. I think that would be cool. Um, or like this other one, I sewed it all the way around. So there's no tuck spot. And then I thought another cute idea for these, probably would do it on a, the bigger journal, where you could actually um, glue them, like put glue here, here, you know, along these edges. And then after, they, after it dried, then take scissors and snip it across here. And then you'd have a little secret pocket. And, you wouldn't necessarily have that whole point. So there's some variety that you can do. Um, I haven't tried it yet because this is only the third one I've made. Um, but that'd be kind of cool. So right now I'm thinking I I'm thinking about sewing these with a sewing machine, but the hard part is coming in through here. I had a a little hard time um, doing that large one on my sewing machine because I didn't have a big enough gap. So I'm thinking doing that sewing it that way, and then maybe having little tuck spots. I'm thinking I'm gonna try that. Yeah, I think I will try that. So for this, I don't really need a permanent glue. I could use a glue stick. So for this one, just so you know, I use a glue stick. I put the glue stick just in the center here. That way when I sew this on my sewing machine, the, the needle didn't get inside of any of the glue because it's more or less just holding it, it's temporary. So, this, you know what, I think I'll use my Barely Art Glue. That way I can get a nice thin bead on the edge. And then when I go to sew it on the sewing machine, see I'm talking, I'm thinking out loud, so bear with me. <laughs> um, and then I'll take the stitch a little bit farther in so I won't get the glue on the needle. I think that's what I'll do. I'm gonna try it, we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and glue that. And I'm only gonna do one signature at a time that way. Um, I'm not going to glue them all together because believe me, it would be really, it's hard to get all that in and out of your sewing machine. But I think with this being small enough, I think I won't have any issues with it. So yeah, I'm just putting that really small bead of glue. I'm going to line this up. Oh, this is directional, but this one's not, so okay. So I don't have to be super fussy. The thing I want to really be mindful of lining up when you're doing this is like when you're got them folded so this outside edge is lined up nice and this so that'll be good. All right, so I'm just gonna let that dry for a few moments and I will be back and show you how it turned out. See you in a couple minutes. All right, here we go. 
I think that turned out pretty nice. I happen to have the navy blue thread in there. Um, against this green, it looks like it's a hunter green. That's navy blue. And here's that. This was the bottom side. You see the white paper came through that. My stitch is a little on the small side, so my next one will make the stitch a little longer. But yeah, I think that turned out nice. And see, this is what I was talking about, about having a little secret tuck spot. Let me find something to slide in there. Oh, cutoffs. I'm doing these cutoffs. I'm going to use this for the pockets. See? Put something a little small in there. Anyway, well, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and do the next ones. So I'm going to um, attach this. Again, if you want to see how I did the attachment. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, first, I want to make sure that I, because I'm mindful of the, what the right side up. So this is the right side. And this... This is going to be the right side as well, even though it's on an angle. I think that would look better than this way. See, that looks upside down. Okay, so this is the right side up. So right side up, right side up. This here is going to be an upside down on the inside, but I don't, I don't think that matters. I think it would look better on the others. The larger part of it. Okay, so let me flip this over like this. I got to, like I say, stay mindful of this. this back over that's right side that's right side up so I'm gonna line these up like this so I got that a little off the points are a little off on this can you see how they're a little off but later I can take a pair of scissors I think and like trim these peak, peaks so it's one peak just to neaten it up so I think that would be better to do like I said I want these to be level let's see what I mean like this I want it to be level like this and I want lower than the other okay Right, so I'll be back after I sew these um, together. I probably should trim that now. But anyway, I'll do that off camera, and I'll be back again. All right. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but when I just sewed just these two edges, it was a lot easier in the sewing machine. <laughs> so... Sewing across here makes it really, for me and for my sewing machine, it makes it really tough when you go to try to tuck that in. So, anyway. And I discovered something here that I wanted to point out. I thought was, you know, that's a good idea. Remember how I was saying concentrate more on lining up the folds along this fold and not worry so much about the gaps here? And then, and I took that to the sewing machine. I told you I would trim it. So I went ahead and trimmed it. And I discovered something kind of neat. See how there's a little gap there, which, which is great, which is, I mean, fine. It's not going to hurt anything. And when you see this one, it's, you know, it's a snug fit. But that fits in like that. So when, it, when you fold it up like this, it doesn't, it takes some of the bulk out of it. So I discovered something. So a little tip. Line these sides up and then cut any extra off so you have a nice straight point. I cut a little bit off on both sides, but it fits in there better. Awesome. Glad I kind of figured it out. All right, so here we go again. Now this paper to me has a direction. To me, to me this would be right side up and that would be upside down, but probably it isn't a great big deal. So I want this, because the, most of the pattern, I want this right set up. Now back here might look like upside down. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not really a 
um, it's not like there's an actual picture or something that like for an ex example like this it absolutely has to be right side up I mean that's obviously upside down so, but this is repeating pattern that's what I'm going to say so it, it doesn't matter so much so okay so I'm going to put some glue on this one This one just happened to work out perfect. <laughs> Both ways. Awesome. This one worked out the way it's supposed to work out. See, it comes to a point perfect, and the edges come together perfect. Okay, so I'm going to sew that. I'm going to be right back, and then I'll show you how it all looks all sewn together. Here we go. Here's a four page accordion. It turned out, I think it turned out really cute. That is nice looking. Of course, I love this print. So here we go. There's tuck spots or pockets, however you want to look at it. Good place to clip things. And then same thing here. Those papers are so pretty together. Then we're going to flip this over. And these, and we we'll have a cover on each side of these, these points on these ends. And then we have this open space. Oh, there's a little place to stick something, like I was saying. In a place. There's another one. And so um, I'm going to sew the signature in. Probably put it in here. So the signature in here, and then, um, and of course I'll decorate it, and I'll make the, this will be the back cover, this will be the front cover side, so I need to make the cover yet, so I will, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for the cover yet, but I, I will, so I'm going to show you that step next, so I'll be back. All right, so now we're gonna do the cover. So I've cut four of these sheets. Four, I thought I'd do this turquoise color as the cover. And in case you're interested in the measurements, these are, this is six and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we have four of them. Again, so this, book is again it's three and an eighth by six and one eighth so it's just going to be a little bit over which is what I want okay so what I'm going to do is flip this over of course because <laughs> this is the I consider the inside so we're going to put this like this. So we're going to sandwich, throw it in there. And if you wanted, you could sew that. You could maybe sew three of the sides. Like here, here, and here. Well, you might be able to sew through there. I mean, I, I did stitches here. Maybe I'll do that. Give this one a little different look. That might make it really cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue on this side here. And I think I'm going to use my Scott Create Tacky Glue. This is really nice glue, actually. So I'm 
butt that right up against the edge there, the, this crease here, and have the hang. So it, see how it just hangs over just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm gonna fold it like that just to make sure that it is in there. And it looks crooked like that, which it might be, but we'll see once we have it finished what it looks like. And then I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue here and cover this one down. I said, I think I'm gonna sew this just to give it a little different. I wasn't going to, and I just, just, just not thought. Well, hey, you know what? Let's let's uh, stitch that down. That might be really cute looking. So then I'm just gonna match this up. Whoa, that wasn't good. Let's line that up again. Beans, I'm going to sew around the edges here. That doesn't need to be adhered down really, really well. It's just um, more or less to hold it in place for now. And, and that will hold well anyway. And we're going to come over in this end. Do the same thing. And this time I want to bring this all the way over here because I do want these to these ends to match up pretty well. You know, this way I want them to match up. And it looks like they are pretty well. They might not be perfect, but I guess this is handmade. I don't think it needs to go a little more that other way, just a tad bit. Let me put this over. There we go. I think that's going to be good right there. Yeah, that's pretty good. See, there is a, a bit of an, like on the inside, there's going to be a bit of a, pull that up, a gap, which is okay. So which we, is what we want, because most books do do that. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go um, sew around the edges. Like I said, just to give this one a little different twist than the other. And here we are. I think that turned out cute. So you have that on the inside. Then it's going to give it a nice little decorative edge there. And then I thought I'd put this here. Drop that down a little bit just so the stitches up on the top can show. And this is heartfelt um, congratulations on a stamp. So that'd be a cute, a cute little cover, I think. So let me put this down. I think I'm gonna use double side tape for that because I don't want it to be bubbly looking.
and make sure we're right side up. Oh, the book because I want to make sure these pairs are right side up. So this is the front cover. Okay. All right, let's be the front cover. So let me place this down. So I'm gonna take this and I'll put it about right here. You know. There's the cover. It's just a simple cover. Like I said, I just want to keep things on the simple side for anyone who's new. So now, remember the little signature I made? I paper clipped it for the moment. And I have to decide which one of these we want to put that in. I was thinking of here. I still think I want to do it here. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over. Let me grab my soft phone book. This is like perfect for poking things through. And I decided to go through these, the spurred one. So I want to do it in the center. I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to hide the, the thread under here. So... Um, I'm grab my ball. So right where it folds, so these kind of overlap a little. So I guess it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly, but close enough. I'm putting it right on that seam. This hole. This will be my center hole. And then I think I'll put it here as long as it's on the seam. I can't see that far away, sorry. And I'm not measuring this, I'm just eyeballing it. This isn't had to be super precise here. My part will be precise, you'll see here in a minute. Okay. Let me turn that around so I can make sure I see those holes. Okay. Okay, so this is my up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist this around because I wanna make sure, um, yeah. I'm gonna flip. Open that up. I'm gonna take my signature and a pencil. Uh, of course, the pencil. Oh, here it is. Let's see, my pencil just had to run away. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're gonna do here. Yeah. Line this up best I can here. I guess I'm gonna fold this in just for right now, just so I can get a better idea where we're at here. So we want a little bit of gap here and a little gap down there. I think that's good. And so I'm gonna mark these holes because I'm doing it on the outside like a goofball that I need to do by the inside. But I think what I'll do is I'll grab the center most sheet, which is this one. Let's mark the center most sheet. I'm going to put a tiny little T right there, which I can erase, just so I remember that's the top. I can open this up. Get my all. Poke my holes in there. Those marks are. Mm 
and see how this is going to be stacked with the ones in behind there. It's going to look taller. That's normal. That's the way it should be. So don't be alarmed by that. So I'm going to put this one. I think I'm going to, I don't have one of those. Oh, I forget what they're called. I mean, I have one, but it's not, it's not going to hold. It's not thick enough. But anyway, I'm going to do my best here. Put that through there. You probably can't see what I'm doing I'm there. So what I essentially did is I folded this the best I could, not you know, part part way. And then hold, this clip is holding the paper still, and I poke those holes through. Um, so, some of those are pencil marks, so don't be distracted by the pencil marks so much. Let me get rid of those. Okay, then I'm gonna. I'm gonna come back from this side, see if I can get that all through there more. Yeah. Sorry if I went off frame there. Okay, then I'm using embroidery floss. It's usually what I use is embroidery floss. Um, but you want to make this approximately three times longer than the page. So one, two, three, and of course I always give it a little extra for good measure. this through there. Sometimes I have good luck, sometimes I don't. Let's see. These strands want to separate. I'm lucky. Okay. I just want to leave a little bit of a tail. And I'm going to bring my journal over here. And I want to fold these out. And then we're doing the three hole pamphlet stitch, which I've shown before. But again, for those of you who are new, this is the three hole pamphlet stitch. This is probably one of the easiest stitches for. Um, um, binding pages or signatures, I should say. This is just one signature for this. And then I'm gonna bring this up through the bottom. Let me flip her over. And we're coming through here. Over. And this is the 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 secret to the three, the pamph any pamphlet stitch three or t five hole. Then you come all the way over like this. Come through here. Come all the way across. Make sure my tail's out. So um, this doesn't be super tight yet. Then I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to come right up through this center hole and come right through this signature. I don't know if you can see it or not. 
come right up through here. And you want to try to be careful and not snag any of those other um, strands of thread. All right, I think I got lucky and didn't get, get any. I usually do. Oh, there's my tail. Okay, so now I'm just going to tighten this up. It doesn't need to be super tight, but you want it tight enough. You don't want it so tight that it rips. See, there's a little bit of slack there, so I can tighten that up a little more. here. Tiny cheese up. I think I'm around here. Tighten up just a little more. There we go. And see how there's a string on either side of this center string. That's so we can tie a knot. You want to tie it like that across there. Then another one. And then you can just snip these off to whatever length that you like. Enough about right there. There we go. Take this clip off. I don't need it any longer. Then I'll flip this over and see now my thread is it disappeared. Isn't it cool? All right. So sorry, where we are with this. All right. So this is the, the front again. We got pockets I'm gonna turn this around and here's the signature we just put in there's a little scratch paper basically I put stamps on here just to jazz them up a little I just put it on one side of each sheet of paper just to give a little something And then we're gonna finish decorating this. And so we can put a pocket over here. Let me grab my scraps here. These are leftover scraps, oops, in this project. Plain piece. One, two, three. There is a fourth sheet somewhere. Oh, it's stuck together. Here we go. Four. So I have this book out of here. I don't need that. Put the tool away. All right. So we have these four pieces left, and they're double-sided, which is pretty cool. You do something like that. There's a little. I know it's a little short. There's a little gap here and there, but you could still. Uh, it's kind of close to that there. So let me see if it's wide enough for this. Mm, not quite wide enough. It's all right. Could also do a little pocket here. Still think it's a little too wide. Okay. Let's do a little. I want to do is, um, a little pocket there, I think. A little simple pocket. So I want that there, but I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crease it like this. So I have a crease in it, so I know I want my crease. There we go. It's not super straight, but at least I got an idea where that crease is. So I'm going to bring it up and crease it better with my bone folder. Now, theoretically, I should just be able to cut right across there. It should fit. So we'll try it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, it looks really short. But when I close it, what was it? Which one was I putting it in? Hmm. I think I'll put it in this one. No, it doesn't matter if it's a little short. What I think I'm going to do is like I did with the other books. I think I'm just going to put a bead of glue on the bottom here. Because this, when you 
I don't know, it just seems like it, it could be a tuck spot. It doesn't have to be a pocket pocket. I think that will be fine. Open that up. Uh, if I open that up, I want that to stay in there. It's a nice thing about wet glue because gives you room to for the project, the pages to wiggle a little bit. I think that's pretty in there. Let's just give her a little tuck spot for whatever kind of graduation mementos she may want to put in here. There's that. Oh, I cut these out too. I thought these would be pretty cute because of the colors. Whoops. These are printables from, oh, I'm not sure where I got these. Um, I'm thinking the graphics fairy, but it might be from my front porch prints. I'm not sure which one. Sorry, I really don't remember which one because I use both. That would be cute in there inside. Like, surprise! See that little butterfly? That background? Because there it's too busy. I think that would be pretty. And I have some blue ink. I think I'll ink that up a little bit. Just for right now, just to kick that white back. I'll use my um, berry art glue. There we go. I think that, that's a cute little page. Anyway, I think I'll decorate the rest of this off camera and then I'll show you how I finished this um, little journal, graduation card, whatever you would like to think of it. A little, little graduation journal for my niece. Um, like I said, I'm going to finish decorating it off camera because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do every single page. Anyway. See you in a little bit. All right, I'm back. Like I said, I would come back and show you this journal as a, as a finished product. So I'm just gonna show you here. So I put some sorry silk around it. And then this is how I decorate the front of it. And then you see this is pretty metallic -y, this little um, elegant um, florette, I think they're called. I can't remember. And then you fold this open couple tuck spots here. I made this little tag I thought was cute. And this is for a graduation gift so dare to fly. I thought that was kind of appropriate and this two double-sided paper. I just thought it was cute to put that in there. And this is just from uh, this is a coin envelope. That's from um, Graphics Fairy. I thought she might have some little trinkety things she might want to save from her graduation. 
and I put that in there. I thought that was appropriate for a graduate. The things you are passionate about are not random. They are your calling. I thought that was cute to put in there. And then when you flip it over, I have this pocket here, another little coin envelope, and I thought that butterfly was pretty, you know, the, the, um, the coloring. And I put some belly bands in here, and these are just some, some cutouts from some um, scrapbook paper that I bought. This is enjoy, enjoy the Now, and this one is Savor Beauty. And then some writing paper for notes. And then I made this paper clip. I think you can see that very well. Let me bring that up closer. So I put some sorry silk on a scrap from this paper. So you can tell it's a scrap paper. And that little stamp. And then I put a little tuck spot here. And I made this, this tag. It says, you are capable of becoming more than you realize. Be brave. I just thought it was another good appropriate saying for a graduation anyway if you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it please like it subscribe and share bye